All right, that sounds a little better, right? Um, like Katie said, my name is Serena. I work for a group called Arizona PERG, which stands for the Public Interest Research Group. I've been um, doing lobbying and advocacy here in Arizona for the past eight years uh, for a couple of different advocacy organizations. And uh, I was really excited when uh, Gangplank approached me and asked if I'd come speak on uh, how to get involved and how to make your voice heard in the political process uh, because it's something that I care a lot about and I think that uh, every person can make a difference and uh, it doesn't take a lot and a lot of times the political process is confusing or hard to navigate or can be intimidating so hopefully today I can answer your questions, demystify some of the process and uh, give you some of my tips for how you can make a difference um, and how your uh, organization or your business or just you as an individual um, can make sure that whatever you care about that your elected officials, um, whether they're at the local, state, federal level, uh, hear what you have to say because I think that that is pretty important. So I'm really excited that all of you are here today. Um, a little bit about the group that I work for. Uh, I. Uh, don't think I went into that already. So um, Arizona PERG is a uh, statewide public interest advocacy group and we're nonpartisan, nonprofit, and we work on a wide variety of issues from expanding public transportation to increasing government transparency to improving energy efficiency in Arizona. Um, so a wide variety of different things and um, we get to talk to a number of different elected officials at all the different levels on all sorts of issues and we always like to have different groups uh, help us out so if you're interested in any of those issues I'd love to talk to you afterwards about that. Um, so just out of curiosity who here has uh, actually lobbied before? Who here has met with an elected official before? Any hands? All right a couple of people uh, has anybody ever sent an email to their member of the state legislature or member of Congress? All right, very cool. Uh, lots of people. Who here has ever asked your significant other to take out the trash? I know I have. Um, sweet. And when you were a kid, did any of you ask your parents to get you some ice cream or buy you a toy at the store? Anyone? Okay, I'm guessing that's everyone. So. You've all lobbied before is what I'm trying to say because lobbying at the end of the day is having a conversation with someone that you need support from. So whether it's when you're little asking mom and dad for that ice cream cone that you really want on one of those Arizona July days or whether it is asking a member of the legislature to vote yes on a bill that you care about, that is all lobbying because at the end of the day all you need is support from a person. Um, and then the important thing uh, that you should remember when you're trying to engage in the process is that the best lobbyists are just really good conversationalists because lobbying is just about having a conversation with someone and, and telling them what you think and getting a response from them. So it doesn't need to be complicated or intimidating. Uh, all you have to do is just remember that you're having a conversation with another person. Um, sweet. So there are a bunch of different reasons why it would be important for you to want to be engaged in the political process and to spend some time lobbying. Uh, the most obvious one is that you're trying to convince a decision maker to support your posi particular position. Whether you want them to vote for something or vote against something or to raise the public profile of something, you're, you're trying to convince decision makers to support a particular position. You also might be trying to raise influence um, and the visibility of your particular business or nonprofit or a cause that you support. So I know the folks at Gangplank really work closely with the city of Chandler. So uh, I think that that's a great example of how they've been able to, you all have been able to raise the profile of Gangplank in the Chandler community and with the Chandler City Council. Um, and then uh, finally, you're educating decision makers about your particular business or organization and about the issues that you care about. Because um, a lot of times elected officials are generalists, not specialists, so you have a lot of good information that you provide and you're educating them on an issue. So there are lots of ways to lobby. I know people always think about lobbying as that one-on-one -on -one conversation down at the Capitol or at, uh, at, at Congress, but this is actually, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can lobby. You can email people, 
you can make phone calls, you can testify before a committee, or you can actually, of course, go meet with someone either you know, at the city, at city council, down at the Capitol. It, it doesn't matter. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can lobby. And, and obviously some of them are more time intensive than others. Emailing, phone calls, those are pretty easy ways to make sure that your voice is heard in the political process. Doesn't take much time at all. Um, and then if you wanted to testify before a committee or testify before city council or meet with an elected official, that takes a lot more time, but it has a really, really deep impact. Um, elected officials know that if you're taking the time out of your day to go meet with them, especially when you have you know, family and business and a whole bunch of other stuff in your life, they know that that must be pretty important to you if you're taking the time out of your day to actually come sit down with them. Um, so your role in the process, uh, first of all, is, is to provide information. A lot of times you're the expert on, on what, what it is that you're talking about. So if you have a long commute into the city and you have to be stuck in traffic every day, you know, the, the person that you're talking to and might have a really short commute and they might not know what it's like to have a lack of public transportation or to be stuck on the freeway for hours on end. So you're the expert on how long it is to take you to commute. You're the expert on what kind of taxes you pay. You're the expert on, on what it's like to deal with your HOA and your um, community. And, and a lot of times people's experiences are really different and you shouldn't assume that your elected official knows everything because a lot of times they don't. You might have a whole lot more information on a particular topic than they do. So in a lot of instances it's your role to be the expert when you're lobbying and, and to be the expert on whatever it is that you want to talk to uh, your elected officials about. Um, your next role is to build influence. So Whatever it is that you care about in the world, whether it's taxes or guns or abortion or nonprofits or you know business development or whatever it is that you care about, you know it's your job to raise the profile and influence of that particular issue or topic with your elected officials. Um, and finally, your, your other role is to keep our elected officials accountable. We, we elected these people, they, they ultimately work for us. So it's our job to make sure that we're holding them accountable and that we go meet with them, that we talk to them and, and make sure that they know how we feel and that if they vote a way that we don't like, that we tell them about it or that we give them an opportunity to be a hero too and, and to do the thing that we're asking them to do. Um, which that's equally important to hold them accountable and to give them opportunities to do the right thing. Um, so that's the role that we play as the public in the, in the process. Oh, and one thing I should have mentioned is that you, if you have any questions or if anything doesn't make sense or if you disagree with me, whatever, you should just go ahead and stop me as I'm talking because this doesn't have to be formal or anything. So, um, And of course we can chat some more and answer questions at the end too. So if, if you've never met with your elected officials before, it's pretty easy to get a meeting. It doesn't have to be complicated. A lot of times all it takes is a simple phone call or email. So it's, it, you know, I, I'd recommend calling, especially if you're trying to uh, meet with someone at the state legislature. It's easy to call up and say, hey, I, I would like to sit down with representative or senator so-and-so, when, when could I get a meeting? And if you happen to live in that person's district, you should mention that because then you're way, way more likely to get a meeting sooner. So that's really as simple as it is. Their phone numbers are on the Arizona legislature's website and you could just call up and ask for a meeting and chances are you'll get that meeting. So it's really, it's really not that hard. It's even easier at the local level if you have your members of city council, um, might be a little bit harder to get a, per a meeting with a person like the mayor, but but people I think in Arizona are pretty accessible. I think, you know, Arizona just it, it, you know it's not like California where there's tons and tons of people. It's um, a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to get a meeting. Pretty easy for people to just walk right into the Capitol and track down somebody that they want to talk to. Um, so. You should allow, you know, assume that if you're trying to get a meeting with a member of Congress or, or with somebody who's like the Speaker of the State House, 
uh, that it might be quite a bit harder to get a meeting with that person. Uh, members of Congress spend a lot of time in DC, but they have regular breaks back to their district. Um, so, you know, you can get a meeting with them while you're here, while they're back in town, or you can get meetings with them if you happen to be traveling to DC too. Um, but those meetings will take a little bit more time and be a little bit more labored to uh, get a meeting with those people. Um, and then the other thing is that you should take advantage of special events. Um, I saw that this morning um, Representative David Schweikert, who represents Arizona's 5th Congressional District, I think we're in District 6 here, so a little bit north of here is actually, he's in Scottsdale today, and he's just at a gas station talking to people about gas prices. So if you wanted to talk to your member of Congress, that would be a pretty good way to just, you know, happen to swing by the, uh, the gas station and say, Hello, Representative Schweikert. Um, I had a few things I wanted to chat about with you. So uh, there's uh, a whole bunch of ways that you can get in touch with these people, and you know, special events is a good way to just like grab somebody for a quick second and tell them what you're, what's on your mind, and what you're thinking. Um, and then here, you know, if you have never actually sat down with somebody, sat down with an elected official. Uh, this is the agenda that I use for every one of my lobby meetings in some form or another. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty much like any other meeting that you've had before, I bet. So, of course, you'd want to introduce yourself. Um, the next step, I think, is really important. You want to build a relationship with this person and, you know, break the ice a little bit. I think it's always nice to be able to find something in common with someone. So even if you politically couldn't disagree with somebody uh, more, it's always nice to see if they uh, follow the Diamondbacks or talk about the weather or any of those cheesy small talk things I think are helpful to just, you know, I always feel more comfortable in a meeting and then it helps you to actually um, build a relationship with whoever you're meeting with. Um, and then I think you'd want to state your position clearly, why, why you're there, why you're meeting with that person, and if uh, you're talking to them about a particular bill or a particular issue, you'd want to tell them what it is that you think about that bill or issue and where you hope that they'll be coming down as well, which is the next, uh, the next step, which is to have a strong ask. A lot of times it's really easy to go into a meeting and be intimidated. I've certainly been there. So yeah, you'd want to have a strong ask. You want to ask them to do something. And, and it, it sounds simple, but sometimes in those meetings, uh, you know, legislators are really good at talking. They're politicians. So it's easy to uh, get off track and uh, remember why you're there to begin with. So you want to make sure that whatever you do when you leave that meeting, that you've asked them to do that thing that you we're setting up the meeting for in the first place. Um, and then I also think it's helpful to leave behind any sort of information that you might have. If you have any sort of like one page document or a brochure, or anything that you can leave behind with people, I think it's always helpful because their staff will file it and if that issue comes up again, then, then they'll have your one page fact sheet with them to uh, pull out of that folder. Um, and then I always think it's helpful to follow up. So if, if it's on a piece of legislation or on something that's going through the city council, there's multiple steps to, uh, to the process. So as things progress, it's always helpful to check in with other people and to, to follow up and make sure that things are continuing the way you want them to and to ask people to do something else for you as well. So they're, they're your elected officials, so you can ask them to do more than one thing. So that's my basic agenda for a lobby meeting, you know, it's not too, not too hard. Everybody, everybody can do it. Yeah? Aside from asking the vote one way or the other, what, what are some appropriate things you get asked? Like, what kind of things do you ask? Uh, well, I think elected officials get asked everything under the sun, but a lot of times people will go to them and, and ask for help. Um, so even if it's, you know, if you are, looking for some sort of, if you wanted to find out how you could find small business tax credits, you might contact your state legislators and say, I know there are a lot of tax credits out there and I'm just not really sure where to begin, but I have a small business in Chandler, could you help me go through the process? Or same thing at the city of Chandler, you could go to them and say, hey, I'm having, you know, I wanted to find out more about how those homeowners associations are always, you know, putting more regulations in my neighborhood. Can can we stop them from, you know, t 
telling me where I can park my car and what color to paint my house or whatever. So, uh, you know, it, even if even if you're not sure if they're the right person to talk to, it's really easy to, you know, they, they work for you. So it, you can go to them and say, hey, I'm just looking for something, looking for some help here. Where can you, where can you direct me? Because they have a whole bunch of resources and they know a whole bunch of people so that's usually a great place to start if you're trying to figure out some sort of government process and you, you don't even know where to begin I think that it's always a good place to just go ahead and ask them questions um, and then if you're even even if it's not on something particular like even if you think that there's something that should be done in the city or the state that's not currently happening, even if there's not some sort of proposal before the city council or bill in the state legislature, I think it's worth it to just go to your member of city council, your state legislators, and say, here's what I'm thinking. Has this been tried before? Is there any way that we could do this? So I think that you know, there's a whole, like, a whole bunch of reasons that you'd want to go talk to your elected officials. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. Um, so here are some of my tips and pitfalls of uh, doing any sort of public advocacy. Uh, my tips are that whenever you're meeting with someone, you'd want to be on time, but you should also be prepared to wait. I know that I've had some crazy occurrences at the state capitol where I've waited like a couple hours sometimes for a meeting. You know, I think if you have to get back to your everyday life because you're not all lobbyists like I am, uh, that's that's cool. You should let them know. But uh, you know, it it does. There are all sorts of crazy things that'll happen, especially at the state capitol and at Congress, where schedules will get off track. There'll be committee meetings that last three times as long as people anticipate that they will. And you know, you, you should be on time, but then you should be prepared that your meeting will not actually start on time. It might start way later than you anticipated. They try to avoid it, but it happens. Um, the other thing that you should be prepared for is that you should dress nicely. Like, you, if you don't wear a suit, you don't have to wear a suit. Um, but you know, you'd want to be dressed like business casual. Um, and then you should be polite to everyone. I, you all seem like very polite people, so I don't want to, you know, patronize you and tell you to be polite. Uh, but you know, the a lot of times, like uh, the secretaries at the Capitol are totally the gatekeepers. Like they're the people who can help you out and give you information and set up meetings and connect you to other people. So if, if you're really nice to them, it's super helpful, and I think they really appreciate it because a lot of people aren't nice to them. Um, and then uh, you should also just be prepared, like if you're going with other people to a meeting, like if you had a, a bunch of people from Gangplank who were going to the state capitol to talk to uh, your state representatives about something, it'd be helpful to you know get together and run through the meeting beforehand and figure out who's facilitating the meeting and what kind of questions you might get and what kind of materials you might want to. So um, always helpful to prepare for the meetings. Um, and then. The, the pitfalls that you should avoid. Um, you should avoid lying. I know it sounds pretty basic, but sometimes when you're in a meeting and somebody asks you a question and you don't actually know the answer to it, it's really tempting to just kind of make something up. But you shouldn't do that. You should just be honest and tell people that you don't know. So you don't have to have the answers to everything. Um, and you shouldn't become flustered. Like the, the people sitting on the other side of the table from you are just normal people. So there's no reason to be intimidated. There's no reason to be scared. They're, they're just normal. So don't be flustered. Um, see some people laughing. Um, so uh, I promise they're normal. Um, and then you shouldn't argue. It's totally OK to disagree with your elected officials. I, I disagree with mine on a regular basis. Um, but you know, there's a difference between politely disagreeing and arguing with people. If you argue with people, it's probably not going to help your cause. But you know, firmly disagreeing, I think, is always OK if you disagree with people. Um, so those are my tips and pitfalls for uh, meeting with your elected officials. And then if you want to, a lot of times what people say to me is like, I really care about what's happening in the state, in the city, but I don't even know where to begin to track this kind of stuff. Um, 
But I think uh, you all, as a social media savvy bunch, uh, are, are lucky because uh, I think that the number one thing that helps me to be plugged in is Twitter. Uh, I feel like I know what's happening like the moment anything happens. Um, so that's super helpful. And I have a list of people that are helpful to follow on Twitter if you're interested in getting more plugged in to state politics. I should have put it on a slide, but I didn't. But I'll email it to you, and that's way more efficient. Um, so uh, Arizona, Arizona's legislature has a website where you can track bills, and it's it's old and not very good in my opinion, um, and in the opinion of the people who are at the Capitol too. Uh, I think you know everybody would want there to be a better website, but uh, state finances being what they are for now, we'll have to rely on their website, which is az leg l or ledge azleg.gov um, and you can uh, in the upper right hand corner there's a bill tracking uh, device so you can search for or you can track any bill by number um, that's probably the easiest way to track down bills and you can see all the committee votes you can see all of the votes of the state senate and state house so you can see how your elected officials voted on anything at any point in the process um, yeah, and then there's also a service called ALICE, A-L-I-S, that you can set up and you can track bills that you're interested in and they can have alerts on what's happening and again, it's uh, pretty old-fashioned technology, but it's totally free. There's a lot of services out there that are more sophisticated, but you have to pay for them. And I know that there's a few of the Phoenix Data people who are working on some pretty sweet tools and I'm really excited for those to launch. Um, because we're pretty low budget at Arizona Perg, so I don't subscribe to any of those uh, fancy high tech, uh, high tech things. So I'm excited that people are hacking um, and figuring out a way to uh, make the legislative process um, easier to track for for everyone. Um, and then uh, there's a lot of political blogs out there. There's a whole bunch of partisan blogs. Um, I think that the uh, Arizona Republic folks do a really nice job of having a political insider blog at azcentral.com and that has a bunch of good info and during the legislative session they'll update a couple of times a day so that's, uh, that's something that I think is um, a really good resource. Um, and then I'd encourage you to find groups and associations that you're interested in, people who work on issues that you care about because a lot of those groups will send out email action alerts and updates about what's happening um, at all levels of government and that's a really good way to get plugged in and then they'll tell you how you can help too and when you can send emails to your legislators and when it's helpful to meet with people too. So I think that all of those things, all of these things are a really good way to be plugged in and to uh, track what's happening at um, the state and the whole country. Um, so. Those are my resources. And um, other ways to make an impact besides just talking to your legislators and your city council members and members of Congress, um, obviously you should vote uh, because that's how these people get into office to begin with and uh, that's, how, that's how we hire them for these jobs. So voting is incredibly important, obviously. Um, and then the other things that you should do is you should talk about issues that you care about with your friends and your neighbors and your colleagues because I think a lot of times we, we shy away from politics. Um, so you know, what's the saying about not wanting to talk about like politics, religion, sex on any, you know, any sort of social interaction. But I think it's too bad that we don't talk about politics more often because I think that these things have a deep impact on our everyday lives and we should be talking about it and it doesn't mean that we can't be civil with people we disagree with but uh, I think if we talk more often then we'll be able to uh, you know be more productive as cities states country um, and then uh, I think that another great way to get involved and to have your voice heard is to write letters to the editor you can even write guest opinion columns um, and I think that those you know having letters to the editor and guest op-eds in the newspapers are a really great way for there to be just more information about how you know, the general public feels about a particular issue. And politicians pay so much attention to those because they know that, you know, if you're taking the time out of your day again to write a letter to the editor, then you must really feel strongly about a particular thing. So that's uh, another great way to make sure that your voice is heard. Um, and does anybody have any questions or anything I could answer? Katie? How did you get into this? 
Like, what's your background? That you got into <laughs> That's, that's a great question. Um, I, uh, my degree is um, in marketing, actually, and, but I always, um, I, I started caring about politics um, because when I graduated from high school, I grew up in Littleton, Colorado, and when I was 18, um, the Columbine shootings happened, and um, I didn't go to that high school, but I really saw a lot of my friends who were you know, deeply hurt and had their friends killed right in front of them at school and I was really upset about it and I wondered why there weren't better policies in place that could have protected people from ever having to see their friends murdered at a high school in front of them. So I was just really angry and because before that I didn't care at all about politics and I realized that you know there are ways that we can make um, our communities and society a better place. So. I started paying attention to politics and I started uh, volunteering on some political campaigns while I was in college and I never really intended to do this kind of work but then I, I just sort of fell in love with getting to uh, talk about things that I really care about to people who can make a difference on these issues and um, yeah so I've been doing political organizing ever since I was in college and then I was lucky enough to find some organizations that would let me do it full time and pay me to do it. So that's how I fell into it. Hmm. Yeah? Um, I'm interested, and I don't know how all this type of stuff works, but uh, I'm interested in taking place, like taking part in the, you know, the next campaigning movements for the presidential elections. Like, what should I do to move into that type of realm? Yeah, well, there's already a whole bunch of stuff heating up with uh, next year's uh, presidential election and the primaries. Um, so, yeah, I think that... If I have a candidate that's in my mind... Yeah, if you have a candidate that's in mind, I, they, um, you know, if they don't have a website yet, uh, they'll have a website soon. And, and a lot of times, you know, that's the big picture, but the, they're, all of the presidential campaigns will have local... Um, local opportunities to get involved and, and I would just figure out who's organizing everything that's happening here and, and let them know that you want to help and you know find out who find out who's in charge and tell them what you like to do and how you think you can help and yeah that's that's how I get involved yeah I always have tons of questions that's great I, I wanted to go into lobbying originally but then I got involved in nonprofits See. Saying like you want to go into lobbying, like what kind of scum are you? And so I'm kind of wondering. Obviously, when you get up into lobbying at a higher level, money comes into account. How do you keep your personal ethics in line with what you're doing as a lobbyist? Or do you ever see conflicts that are very difficult for you? Um, yeah. I mean, I think that's uh, that. It depends on who you work for. Um, I happen to work for you know, an organization that I, I agree with what the organization stands for, but I know that a lot of my friends who work for lobbying firms, who work as contract lobbyists, like sometimes they have to work on uh, things that they don't necessarily agree with. I have a friend who worked on um, a ballot initiative last year um, and that friend told me that they were not in fact voting for the ballot initiative that they were working to pass. So um, that you know, that friend makes a lot more money and that's just kind of one of the, uh, oops, uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, trade-offs you make. So sometimes, sorry, I'm trying to get through to the end, but um, yeah, so that, that'll happen. Like, you know, it's up to you whether you want to, um, whether, whether it's, you're okay with, you know, making money even if you, it means you're working on something that you don't agree with. Um, and, and some people are okay with that and I'm not one of those people. So, um, so you're probably asking the wrong person. So I've not been in that situation. Other questions, guys? All right, thank you, Serena, very much for coming Thanks. in. Thanks for having me. Um, this is my shameless self-promotion. You can uh, follow my organization on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I tweet mostly about, you know, work and politics and stuff and um, food because I really like food. Um, then, um, and you should, you know, if you ever have a question or want to contact me, you should not hesitate to shoot me an email or if you 
must, you can call me. Um, I just like email. So, uh, yeah, and we're on Facebook too. And if you're interested in finding some other people who are, you know, politicos in Arizona, um, I can give you a list of people that, um, that are legislators or lobbyists and you can follow them too. And I have um, organizational materials and business cards if you want anything else too. Is uh, Perk ever looking for volunteers? Oh, we are always looking for volunteers. Um, and uh, the thing that I'm working on right now is I'm working on um, transportation and government transparency issues and particularly with expanding public transportation in Arizona. I'm looking for people to write letters to the editor or if you're a small business to endorse connecting Phoenix and Tucson with passenger rail um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We're always looking for, uh, for people to be involved with what we do. Thanks. I like that question. <laughs> I like all the questions. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks.